do pretty good this year uh it's weird how baits like that they kind of they kind of come and they kind of go you know sometimes they're hot one year sometimes they're not i think, I think a lot of it is based upon like our weather conditions you know like higher water lower water muddy clear stuff, things like that uh, than anything else and then it just kind of translates across the country and if you hit certain lakes at certain times like that that's kind of what you get you get go to the channel please subscribe What's going on here is, is if, if you've never seen this before, I just finished up a Toyota series on Rayburn. It was the third one. I ended up coming in fourth. I caught basically every single fish on a swim jig. I ended up winning Angler of the Year for the entire series. Now, I, I told everyone in those videos I was gonna do kind of my swim jig breakdown. I, I talked about it a lot in the videos. I showed it a bunch, catching all the fish basically on a swim jig. And I changed that little bitty small details. Uh, that's what I want to go into detail about are those little small details about what I think is better about why I chose certain things and then kind of give you a rundown of, of and explain that, you know, explain why certain things are better. Show you all about the setup, the swim jig, the trailer, the rod, the line, the reel, all that stuff. And I've got a bunch of stuff out um, and I'm going to go over it all. OK, but let's dive on in. Let's dive on in. What I'm going to start off on is what. I ended up catching most of the fish on okay and I'm gonna start there and then I'm gonna explain the other swim jigs and explain why I chose that one or I didn't really even choose it I just kind of like stumbled upon it a little bit better that it was just a little bit better than what I was doing so let's go you know me y'all know I keep it real I don't ever like give y'all a bunch of fluff this is still the same swim jig this is a couple of weeks later this is still the same swim jig now if you're looking at it going there like look at that I mean that's horrible right look at those strands now what those strands what happens is is that's from the glue okay because i i put all my trailers on glue no matter what i don't care what kind of keeper they have on there i'm gonna save a bunch a bunch of money and baits and to be honest with you i i almost ran out of baits and so um that's why i always use glue so here's what we're gonna do what happens is is the more you glue this those strands uh, break off when you when the glue touches them now why do I keep the same jig and hadn't changed skirts there's a reason for that I don't mind less skirt okay uh, I, I learned this years ago just fishing and, and it was basically the same deal where I would start off with the new swim jig and it actually runs a little bit better with less skirt on there so I don't actually mind a little less skirt the reason it runs better is if you have all that skirt okay I'll show you all one so if you have all that skirt okay skirts jig trailers um skirts jigs spinner baits the more skirt the more that skirt kind of drags that bait and it really doesn't allow the bait to do anything if you have less skirt on there if you have a trailer or something it looks it looks a little bit more like a profile it looks better um, it, it wobbles through the water a little bit better because the skirt stabilizes the bait, if that makes sense. It doesn't allow it to do this. It just runs through the water. Now, the skirt's going to be doing this, but I actually like my bait to kind of do this a little bit more in the water. So, I don't mind it. So, this is what I caught them all on, white rage bug. I usually take those off. 
I usually take that off, so I'm just left with that. I'm used to just biting a piece of it off. And that's what I get, okay? So, I put that on there like this. About halfway down, and I get it to about right there. That's when, man, I this is the only glue I use. It's uh, Loctite Super Glue. I don't mind going through these things. They're not that expensive. Hopefully, I still have a little bit left in there. I probably don't. Yeah, I do. And so I just glue that on there. I just put it all around there. What's good about that glue is basically by the time right now, I could get up and make a cast with it and and it's not coming off. It's already glued on there. So I can sometimes go four, five, six, seven, ten. I mean, there's really no telling. You're usually not going to lose the trailer. The worst time is when if you swing one in a boat and, it, and you're holding on to it and it starts swinging like that, it'll sling that, that tail off. But other than that, you usually don't use lose them. So that's it. That's my setup right there. Okay. And if you can tell, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of skirt on there, but you got to realize this bait right here, that's a lot of body on this trailer. So they can still see that in the water. I mean, sometimes you can just use this rage bug by itself and swim it on a Texas rig and you'll get, you'll get quite a few bites doing that. So it's just, you know, the difference is, is I have a little bit more of an open hook and it just, the, this uh, weed guard is going to protect it just enough, even though the deal was is I wasn't swimming it under the water that much. I was swimming it above the water. Okay. And that's key. That's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. So I brought this other swim jig. If y'all have seen in other swim jig videos I've done, I throw a lot of, of this swim jig. Okay. Like a bunch. And that's just a regular half ounce swim jig. And I, I put a, a swimming caffeine chat on it. Okay. If you watched, I'll, I'll throw up the link. Here's my other videos of the one rod challenge. And it's a two part series. And I basically throw this the entire time. And basically what I told everyone was, is if you really want to get good with a bait, okay. And learn some things about it, learn some things that you probably didn't even know, go throw this bait at the right time. Make sure it's, it's a time that you can catch some fish on it, but just throw it no matter what all day long. And, throw it in different cover, throw it in different depths. And that's what I did. And at the end of the video in part two, I ended up slow rolling it really, really slow and deep, deep grass. And man, I got on some big ones. Okay. And I caught a lot of fish that day, but my big ones all caught came later. It definitely showed me that I probably would have tried something else there and not this. So I was glad I stayed with it all day long. That's kind of one of those deals that I like to do. Sometimes I pick up a bait and I never put it down all day if I'm really wanting to learn something. I talked about fishing this out there deep and fishing this one shallow. For whatever reason, I kind of think I know, but this is really not a good swim jig for up there shallow if you're bringing it up over stuff. Um, I just get, I'll just be honest with you guys. I get a ton more bites on this if I'm getting them to come up and eat rather than this one, which is down there with them in three, four, five, six foot of water. I don't catch as many on this. I catch them more on this. Um, but for whatever reason, they really like this. It's brighter. I think it's a lot of the trailer. I think pretty much all of it is, is the trailer. This thing on top of the water with those legs doing this look phenomenal. Now, can you use other trailers? Yes. I was using the Rage Baby Crawl um, on day one. Okay. On day one, I was throwing this one. Okay. It's a quarter ounce swim jig. And that is a three eighths ounce swim jig. Um, and I had the Rage Baby Crawl on day one. This is all I had left. Uh, anywhere in my boat and my anywhere so so I was kind of worried so I started slowly changing to the white rage bug just because I had more and I wanted to make sure they ate it and then I stay with the white rage bug the rest of the day there's two things about that the rage bug and the rage crawl okay I'll get one out there's not a ton of difference okay what you're gonna get is is you're gonna get the same movement from the legs okay 
there's not that much. This is a little bit slimmer profile when it comes to right here. So they go here as when that baby rage ball, they kind of do this. It's a little bit spread out. If you notice, this doesn't have a lot of body to it. Okay. So yes, you might want to keep more of the skirt on there when using this one. This one, I don't have to. Okay. It's a, it's a bigger body. And actually, sometimes I like it better because when you rig it like this, it's flat. It stays on top of that water and lets it make maintaining that level um, look on top of the water. This bait will actually let it do that a little bit better. And it's a little bit bulkier if that's an issue. Now, the reason why I liked it better, one, it was cloudy and rainy every day. So I didn't mind a bigger profile. I was moving it pretty fast through a lot of cover. Now, if it was dead sunny and the lake was really, really clear, I probably would have gone more to this and made that skirt a little bit thinner. Now, it was a shaz pond going on, so white was key. Like, white was everything, okay? So remember that. It depends on what you're trying to imitate. If it's a shaz pond, go white. Now, the, here's the other deal, guys. It was pretty clear, so I didn't mind moving it fast, and the lake was coming up, but I was reeling it over hay grass and around bushes and kind of anything in the water. And so they'd come up there and they they would never hardly bust water. A couple of them would, but mainly they would just come up there and swirl and eat it. So that's my jig setup. Now here's the rod and reel setup. I had this rod. This is what I caught them all on on day two and day three. I never lost a single fish with this setup day two and day three, okay? I did not do this on purpose. I had, usually if you see me with a swim jig, I usually have 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon on, okay? I don't think it matters with a swim jig. I think you can go heavy. I have it on a pretty stout rod. I have it on my Super Duty 300 reel, okay? I do that because, man, it's where I'm at. I'm usually fishing around a lot of cover. I'm usually going to catch some big fish, but I throw that fluorocarbon. If you've seen me, I like a fluorocarbon on a swim jig that goes under the water all the time. And the reason is I think they eat it better. I don't really want them to feel when they bite it. If you have braid, when they bite it, you're so connected to it with braid and that rod that I think a lot of times they feel it and then they feel you and that, that pressure. If you've got fluorocarbon on, a lot of times when they bite it, they don't let go of it as good, you know, and so you can really reel down to them and really lean into them. Okay. Now the problem with that was, is that's what I had it on, on that quarter ounce swim jig. It's blowing on day one, which means it blew that quarter ounce swim jig everywhere. I didn't like that. And I lost one or two. Now, if you go back and watch those videos, you can see how thick of the, some of the stuff I was throwing it. Okay. A lot of my, most of them I got out, but I didn't want to lose any, right? That's my whole philosophy. I don't ever want to lose one. And I think there's ways around that. So luckily on day two, I had just rigged one up with braid. So I had 60 pound sunline braid on uh, the plasma braid. And I put a three eighth ounce instead of an ounce. Cause I was like, man, maybe I'll just get a little something heavier, you know, just bigger braid, heavier bait. I, you know, I didn't really know what I was going to do with it, but I just wanted to rig another one up because I knew I was going to throw a swim jig. So when I threw that, when I started throwing that bait with braid, I, they were, it was a shad spawn early in the morning. I was throwing around this hay grass and then all the, like I was catching them and they were blowing up and, and I just reached down there thinking the swim jigs look alike. I reached down there and threw that one out there with braid and like first cast, I catch one and I was like, oh, that feels kind of good. And so I started using it more and I started liking it way more. And it was, it was, it was a smarter way to fish it. Here's why. When I was throwing it over that hay and you, I wasn't worried about feeling them hit it. I could see every one of them hit it. So I was watching them hit it. So when they'd swirl, I'd set the hook because about nine times out of 10, they had it. I never had one miss it and try to come back and eat it. I throw just, back in there. So I, w I didn't want her getting down in more of the hay and more of the bushes. That's what happened on day one. A couple of them came up and ate. And by the time they went two foot down, they're in thick hay. And when I'd set the hook, I'd never felt like I got a lot of a good hook set on. Them. So 
I realized with that braid before they could even get down there, I could smoke them. And they, if you watch that video, you'll see a lot of times when they, when I set the hook, they're already almost out of the water because I mean, I'm doing it that fast. So the braid helped out tremendously. I could feel it more. I could see everything more. It was all a visual thing. I wasn't worried about trying to feel them bite it down there. So that was a better deal. I could get it through the thick stuff. Now I bring this up because this is important. They just had a term on Neely Henry, okay? And Swindle was talking about using a composite rod, okay? And if you watch, he was kind of fishing around that water willow, but he was throwing on the very outside edge of it. And he wasn't having to reel in a bunch of big ones for one, like when I say big ones, like fish over four or five pounds. Um, a four pounder is a big one on Neely Henry. He wasn't having, he was catching them in open water. So you could get away with that little bit easier rod you know something that wasn't so heavy like i was throwing something he he wouldn't have to bring it through a bunch of stuff i was having to bring it through hay a little bit of hydro and some stuff there was bushes like crazy and so i was having to bring it maybe through all that stuff so i needed a rod to like kind of maneuver and make sure they came out of where i wanted to i couldn't let them swim around there was no way i could let one run off if i let her run off or do something I didn't want her to do, I'm probably, she's going to get hung up in something. It's just about the circumstances you're around, right? If you're around some open water, I'm, I agree with Swindle. You probably should use a little bit lighter rod, one that flexes a little bit more, one that, you know, you, that it'll give, you know, and that way you probably won't lose them. Totally agree with him. But I went in that circumstance. So as I was throwing in stuff like this and that thick stuff, you know, I want to ride this a little bit heavier. I want a reel that's heavy. I mean, I got my heavy, this is what I frog fish with. I got my braid on that I frog fish with. And there's a reason. And like I said, it, it worked. I caught all those fish. But that's my swim jig setup, guys. And that's what I do. Like I said, there's a couple key points that I want y'all to remember, okay? One, the braid was huge. Just that subtle, man, I know it's only two fish, but one of them was a big one, okay? And that might have been the difference between me coming in second or third or fourth. I just didn't want to lose another one, right? I didn't have it. I never feel like you should be have to lose fish, you know? So the braid was a big deal. The quarter ounce to three ounce swim jig, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it did help me on my casting accuracy in the wind, okay? And the three eighths was just a little bit more. I liked it a little bit better. It, it came through that, hey, I don't want a heavy swim jig when I'm reeling on top of the water. It seems to hang more, it digs in more. So you wanna go kinda of as light as possible. And that's what I was trying to accomplish with the quarter ounce. But then, like I said, there were some things out there that, that made the quarter ounce not as good as the 3 8 ounce. A lot of that was based on wind, white capping. Like you, you, I needed something just a tad bit heavier. Okay, the other thing, trailer. You know, there's so many trailers out there and situation, I wanted a trailer that was small compact and i really wanted it to have two you know two legs on it doing this i didn't want the you know the paddle tail swim bait i mean a lot of times i'll throw the raid swimmer on the back of one you know cut it in half and fill it it just kind of depends but that's more when i'm trying to get something under the water and, and reel it down there slower um, those those have different applications to them like i said color color was easy it was white it was a it was a shad spawn deal um, I will, you know, I don't get too crazy. I usually go black and blue, white, or just a, a green pumpkin. Uh, the water, like I said, we had a cloudy. It, once it's cloudy, I can go to white and feel comfortable. Um, I had some other guys throwing some different colors. They, they, they really weren't working. And I wanted a bright white. For whatever reason, a really bright white during the shad spawn is usually better. And remember, you're they're coming up to eat it, okay? And that was a big deal. I didn't think you know, reeling it down there a foot was as good. Like they, it was amazing. They wanted it sometimes up on top, coming up over things, even breaking the surface. Like a lot of times it would break the surface and come over stuff and they try to eat it then. Think the frog would be good. It was okay, but there's something, man, when they want that swim jig, they want it, you know, why are you with it? That's my swim jig uh, setup, guys. That's my little discussion about like just this, it's the little things. I mean, next time you see me throwing a swim jig, I might be doing something totally different, and I'll talk about that. But for right now, this, the swim jig's still going to work. It's still going to work. The shad spawn's still going on down here. We have a bunch of rain, a bunch of high water, 
a bunch of things are flooded. I'm probably going to be throwing this thing for the next month or two. Um, and I don't mind it. Like, I love it. And it'll catch some big ones, and it'll catch a bunch of fish when a lot of the things will catch fish, but they don't work as good. So, tie on a swim jig. Go out there. Check it out. See y'all, guys.